Hello everyone. I am Tammy Nui in Marketing at Close Inc. Thank you for joining us in our Close Monthly Webinar. Today we will be discussing maintaining now instance performance. I will take a few minutes to go through today's webinar agenda. Housekeeping, talk about close, followed by the presentation, and finally Q&A. So for housekeeping, the webinar will, will be recorded and you will be able to access it later. During the webinar, you will, be, we, you will all be on mute. If you have any questions, please use the Q&A section in your Zoom control panel and our panelists will answer them shortly. For, for any questions that are not directly related to the webinar, please email us at sales at closeinc.com. Our social media channels are listed here. You can, also, you can also access our previous webinars at our Close YouTube channel. Since 2011, Close has been a ServiceNow partner and the headquarters are the headquarters just around the corner from ServiceNow in Santa Clara. With over 250 customers and 500 implementations, 500 plus Im implementations, we are, top, we are top service providers that execute projects globally. We are HR, CSM, and ITSM experts committed to deliver excellent, excellent user and customer experience. Um, now, I would like to present to you our panelist, Sagar Agarwal, um, a ServiceNow dev developer for Closing. Thanks, Tammy. Hello, everyone. This is Sagar Agarwal from Close. I've been a ServiceNow developer with experience of seven plus years. I've built complex and scalable solutions for clients that help them to have a better user experience and build a better processes for them. <clears throat> In my free time, I like to build web apps. So today we are go going to explore what and why of ServiceNow platform and how it scaled over time, whether your performance of instance is degrading or not, and why you should be taking care of your performance. Uh, of instance, then why those performance uh, is degrading? Who is uh, being affected by those, whether it's end users or fulfillers, both? And then a roadmap to uh, focus solutions toward those uh, user groups along with platform wide optimizations and why performance should be a key deliverable for your upcoming and all the next implementations so starting with what and why <clears throat> so uh, service now has grown uh, more than an it service management tool over the time and in, it has bring in many other departments and functional areas of an organization on a platform which can be translated to hr uh, legal uh, performance analytics then you have the entire item part and a lot more. Along with these functional areas included in ServiceNow, <clears throat> ServiceNow provides package solutions which are open to customization. So they provide an entire business process, which over the top you can customize as per your needs, along with freedom to build your own custom solutions. So if ServiceNow haven't built anything for you yet, you can go ahead uh, the entire platform provides you all the tools to build a solution that can bring your entire business process to the platform and tie up with other parts of the platform itself. So is your performance uh, instance performance degrading? Well, first of all, performance. So ServiceNow is a pass uh, type of instance. It's a platform and ServiceNow should be taking care of that. But Yes and no is the answer to that. Then <clears throat> the second part would be, are your users complaining that the list or the forms are loading slow? It's not a very good user experience over the time. And do you notice some random behaviors, whether there are some random pop-ups or some specific parts of your 
implementation have slowed down over the time, uh, maybe like few months down the line of the implementation. If yes, then this webinar would be for you. Why your instance uh, performance is degrading? There can be multiple reasons for that. Functionality not scaling with data when you start implementing, you have some functionalities, you have some features that you want to provide your users or you want to use them as a part of automation. But when you tested them out, it worked pretty well, you didn't see any lag. But over the time as the data for that particular functional area increased, the functionality starts growing slow. Second could be reason, <clears throat> little efficiencies piling over the time. So you build uh, certain features which on their own is not inefficient or not very slow, but when they are clubbed together, they perform a bit, little bit slower over time. Then not so good code. So we as a ServiceNow developers or anyone who is working on ServiceNow, we do code, but sometimes we neglect things because ServiceNow is really good in taking care of those. But with those little efficiencies or with those uh, code uh, that doesn't work well or are not optimized, uh, when they group together or get on a large scale, they perform inefficiently. Then, as I mentioned earlier, that didn't happen because of one business rule. Because we have a lot of things, it's not just that your one business rule is slow, that's why the entire implementation or entire system is working slowly. It's little things or somewhat things that uh, you didn't notice over the time, which piled up, clubbed together, and then showed you the degradation of the performance of the system. <clears throat> so, how performance impacts your user experience? And by the user experience, first we'll take a look at the end user experience. So, uh, your user experience or your user interacts with service or majorly through service portals now. And the major part that they interact with is forms whether it's a catalog form, whether it's an incident or whether it's any form. So the form is loading uh, slowly. Reason can be many things, but that is one of the reason that is degrading the user experience plus performance. That form could have been worked uh, very fast, but due to some inefficient code or maybe due to addition of extended functionality that could have been saved, uh, the form is loading slowly. Then scrolling through list of irrelevant records. So <clears throat> a user is uh, looking at the list of his records that he has created and it's a very long list. And he just keep on scrolling. Usually user looks for open records, but let's say if user want to see a record that he created like a year ago for some reason, he has to scroll a long list of records, then the slow navigation on portal itself. So when you build a portal, there are a lot of components that we are working with. And sometimes when we try to do a lot of things or maybe not optimize in terms of web experience, uh, we have a slow experience, uh, user experience on portal. Then uh, just to reiterate the form part. So I have seen, some forms where user clicks on a list and just to display the data within that list, it looks like 14, 15 seconds or maybe 20 seconds to load that data. And it's like ages in terms of web user experience. Then the second would be fulfillers. These are the people usually get ignored because for each and every implementation, we usually look at the end user, his experience, uh, how much we can make uh, the entire thing easier for them and don't care a lot about the fulfillers, but they are the people who are actually going to interact with things and provide you a great experience for your end users. <clears throat> and some of the points do uh, are similar, but uh, um, these would be the part of native view instead of portal view. So long lists, 
this takes a lot of time so when you look at any out of box solution they provide three four menus to display the number of records which have specific filters if you have built a custom uh, one custom application or even if you are working with out of box think about how, how many records that are going to load for a particular fulfiller or how many customizations have you add on the list itself so that when the list loads how much time it's going to take to process that <clears throat> Then the second would be the form takes a lot of time to load. And the reason for this are two parts. First, the catalog items, when the request is generated, some of the logic is translated to the native view too. And if it's slow for end user, it's surely going to be slower for fulfiller. And the second part would be uh, <clears throat> automation is a great part of service. Now it helps you to automate things make things more streamlined uh, reduce the human error but it also brings a slow experience if you try to do a lot of things a lot of automation or simply good automation but it wasn't implemented in a correct way that's why it's getting slower over the time then <clears throat> the third point would be you have a lot of data to display wouldn't it be nice if uh, some fulfiller tries to find a particular ticket or maybe particular set of tickets uh, and they just see those tickets instead of a long list of records in which he has to filter out manually. Then <clears throat> in terms of fulfiller, every second that is wasted translates to money. And if we are working with lot of fulfillers, then it's a very large sum of money. Then roadmap to performance and maintainable implementation. So we have already seen some of the focus area where you need to uh, improve the performance. Plus what are the issues on the core and people surrounding it? So first we'll focus on the end user solutions where we can improve uh, in what ways we can help our users to have a better experience, not waiting or not wasting their time because time translates to money. So first is user interaction with portal. So when you are building a portal, keep that in mind that each and every page, how you are moving from one page to another, that transition, how much time it takes, whether we can reduce the number of clicks. Are there any components on the form or page itself that takes a lot of time to update or load the form, which in turn translates to slow performing pages on service portal. Then the second would be uh, break your list into groups wherever possible. So let's say if you're a user and you want to see a closed incident that was created like a year ago. <clears throat> First, if I provide you a single list, that's a very long list. It has maybe like open records or records that are currently being worked on in the closed records. It's a tasm. So instead, simply provide them three tabs like open records, work in progress records, closed records. Then there's a feature called pagination where instead of providing you a long list, you break that list in like maybe chunks of 10 or 20 records. So the way it helps your uh, instance to improve the performance is when you try to get large number of records, it's going to take a lot of time to get those records, then update the page to display those records. While if you switch to grouping the, uh, those records or maybe using pagination, then it would get a set number of records instead of the entire list. And Whenever a user <clears throat> wants to get more number of records, he can simply click on a button and the next part of the record list is displayed to them. Then optimizing the image resolutions for different screen sizes. So <clears throat> uh, this comes from a web developer mindset of mine where we simply do one thing, we take an image, maybe on a home page, you want to display a very large image 
it's good on the media but the thing is how much uh, what's the size of that image if you are trying to load a 3 mb or 5 mb image on a desktop maybe it, it has a high speed connection so it doesn't uh, slows your user experience or degrades your user experience but if someone is working on tab or maybe on mobile then it's surely going to take a lot of time to download that image plus why simply just use three or four different sizes and um, sizes of the image so that for each and every targeted screen size or mobility purposes you have a different image that loads it improves the overall performance it takes less time to load the entire page <clears throat> and in the end your user is happy that he can just start using the portal without waiting for the images or simply the page to load then optimizing back end queries and print only the required data <clears throat> so this also links to the earlier thing that i mentioned where we are getting a lot of records or maybe all the records that user had instead whenever you are trying to bring in some data from server side to client inside whether it's portal or maybe backend get the relevant data only from the server so that it's easier for you to process easier for you to display that you uh, data to user then minimize functionality and maximize usability don't try to do a lot of things what uh, it means is i've seen that uh, on some of the pages we try to do a lot of things let's say uh, we have a kb article uh, page or maybe kb page on the portal we provide the country filter we provide the category filter subcategory filter those things are good but if you have very large number of kb articles and you are going to add some custom functionality to filter those KB articles based on whatever selection the user has made. So each and every time user adds a selection, so system has to go back to the server, see and process all the KB articles that you have, then filter that down and bring them and display them to users. So it's going to take a lot of time. Maybe it's just in seconds, but if your user is trying to find something, they are not going to wait three, four seconds. Plus, in terms of web experience, three, four seconds is like a year. Not year, it's a bit exaggerating. But um, try to minimize, uh, have a user experience which uh, brings your data within two seconds or maybe less so that the user is not just uh, sitting blindly and waiting for the results to be displayed to him then fix those catalog items <clears throat> so uh, this translates to uh, i've seen that people build a lot of functionality we have a lot of validations we have certain filters to bring only this data based on these queries or on the form loads we try to do a lot of things that can be automated so that user has a better experience but if you have a lot of these automations whether it's on load or on change when user fills out certain forms and based on that you um, change the data that can be inserted in other fields it kind of clubs together and piles on and slows down the entire experience then the fulfiller focus solutions so uh, the first one would be the user interactions with a native UI. It would be something similar to uh, whenever the form loads or whatever the lists are, whether it's a dashboard or home pages, then it can be anything that is related to native view, because most of the time our fulfillers are not dealing with service portal until unless you have a process in which someone calls a fulfiller person and they submit the form on their behalf but that can also be done on the native view itself too so the first one would be the slow loading lists and forms so uh, one of the things i saw and uh, we did a refactor for a client too uh, they were uh, what they did was they 
build a functionality in which some of the fields based on, uh, based on the data that they have on the other fields. And it was specifically for CMDB. And what happened was whenever someone goes into the CMDB, whether he opens the list of servers, uh, that list, uh, when the list loads, all those automatically calculated fields uh, run each and every trying, uh, based on each and every field, uh, they try to populate the uh, calculated value. And what happened was, even if they were loading just 20 records at a time, 20 CIs, with these 20 calculations, that form was really, uh, that list was really slow. And same goes for the forms too, where you try to do a lot of things. You have many calculated values or you have client scripts that do some validation or bring uh, information from other tables based on certain selections you have made. But they, over the time, slow down the form. Even if you are running asynchronous code, they do uh, reduce or impact the user experience. Then they limit the data in the list with the appropriate filters. So uh, going back to that CMDB example again, so if you simply uh, provide a list like open all the CMDB CI servers, although this would not be an appropriate example because uh, we have an extensive list of modules and links for CMDB, but simply think about this, uh, your user or your fulfiller opens the list of incidents and he simply clicks on all. So he's thrown with like 100,000 records if you have scaled that well and your process has matured. So your user has to, or your fulfiller has to go through those records or system has to go through all those records and display that to him. So it takes time and it's not just one fulfillers. There are multiple fulfillers that are working simultaneously. So these are the server calls and the response that server has to give. So it scales over the time with the number of or amount of data you have in the system, along with the number of fulfillers and users that are working simultaneously on the system. Then optimizing home pages and dashboards. <clears throat> so, uh, all the report, uh, all the reports on whether it's a home page or dashboard, it displays some kinds of a data. And the thing about those reports are they updates frequently, whether it's a one minute, two minute, five minute mark, whatever you have decided uh, or configured those reports for, but they do update. And let's say if your 10 users or 10 fulfillers have opened those reports simultaneously, it's a 10 different call every five minutes from your uh, user and to server. So think about how many reports you have on a single dashboard, whether those are relevant or not, whether you want them to be updated every minute or maybe five minutes. And if the answer is yes, then try to group those reports on a separate homepage or a dashboard so that you have a fun single dashboard which takes or which is not that efficient, but that makes all the other dashboards much more efficient. Then identifying and fixing forms with slow functionality. So we have implemented, let's say incident. We have built a lot of, uh, a lot of automation, like someone selects a CI, your assignment admin group is automatically populated whenever someone changes CI on the incident, the form gets automatically uh, updated with a new assignment group. Things like those, it can be priority, it can be content of the short description, it can be some validations. If you added some more fields, then some more automation related to those. So whether it's uh, those automations are happening when the form is open or whether those are happening when the uh, when something is changed on the form itself, if multiple things are happening at the same time, the performance of completing those tasks within a shortest time span is would not be very good. It's going to be taking a lot of time to do that. So try to optimize, uh, try to 
segregate that what needs to be done at a single time. Let's say you build a feature and that triggers a lot of other automations too, which happens on the client end, then it's going to be a slow performing functionality. Try to break them uh, if they can be independent of each other, then it would be great so that one functionality doesn't trigger to the other functionality. Then minimizing the functionality on the client end and maximizing the usability. It would be a reiteration that don't try to do a lot of things, especially if they are unnecessary. Usually we have unnecessary things to do. If you can break those functionality so that they are not independent, uh, they are not dependent on each other, that would be great. Uh, if you can club them together, so you don't have 10 different scripts who do 10 similar kinds of things that could have been on a single script, that could be great. Then fixing those slow catalog form, it would be something similar that a user were facing on the portal itself or from wherever they are submitting a request. If you have applied those, uh, or whether it's a client side script or whether it's a UI policy, if you have also applied it for the record itself, so it's, those are going to work on the native view too. And the slow experience translates to the fulfiller too. Then uh, this section would be focused on the platform wide optimization and not the uh, any persona focus. And this would help you to identify that what are the places that we can look into the system to optimize and moving forward, if you are going for implementation, then these are the kind of a checkpoints where you can see uh, the yes, These are the things which we need to optimize or keep efficient so that we can have a better experience and better performing system. So the first one would be the list V3. It's a version of functionality that, uh, that is added to the list view. It's really great. It brings a lot of new features, but it's slow. So the uh, first thing would be wherever your lists are out of the box or whether you have built them, just limit them to 20 records at a time. If you have implemented V3 and you're still showing like 50 records, 100 records in a single list, it's now time to switch and move to a 20 records and you'll see the loading of list more optimized and more performing instantaneously. The second one would be calculated values. It's great to have that kind of feel where you can simply uh, simply generate a, a information based on what information you have in the other fields. But the drawback to this feature is that calculated values are calculated each and every time your form loads or your list loads. So if a form loads and you have a single field that is based on calculated values, it's not going to be uh, inefficient if you are not uh, generating that value based on a lot of data. But if it's simple, like two, three fields, like uh, if you have priority, uh, you are selecting a priority one based on other things, then it would be simple. But this thing translates to list two because that single uh, field, calculated field on the form, if you are loading 20 records, those are 20 fields that are calculated each and every time your list is loaded. And if you are showing like 50 or 100 records in a list at a time, then you can see how this problem scales and you need to optimize. So have calculated values, but think about how you are going to scale with it, uh, with when the data is introduced in the system and how it's going to impact your performance in the uh, fulfillers or maybe user experience. And then same goes for complex field styles. Field styles is really great. Uh, it can um, straight away show you some Thing like maybe status or maybe a user is a VIP or not. But if you try to do a bit of over uh, for them, 
then the same happens as we saw for the calculated values too. You have too many field styles on multiple fields, uh, whether it's a form or whether it's a list, it's going to take a lot of time when your list or forms are loads. So be smart about that. If you are building a feature, at least try to avoid uh, bringing more than one or maybe like two calculator or uh, field style fields on the list itself because at least you are going to show 20 records at a time. So if it's one, be smart. If you can convert, uh, uh, field styles cannot be converted or they have their own niche. Well, calculated values, they can be converted to like a, maybe async business rule or a before after business rule <clears throat> where whenever some certain fields are changed or information are changed, then your field value is automatically calculated, but it's not happening each and every time your list is loading or your form is loading. So totally depends on use case, but think about that, try to convert it if it can be. Then breaking down large quantities of import into chunks. So usually what we do is uh, when we set up an import, we do it uh, during off hours through a scheduled job. But if you are a, a ServiceNow client who is who has a global presence, that doesn't help you out much because every time is a business hour for you. So in that case, if you are bringing a lot of data from certain sources or maybe you are running multiple integration or imports uh, that are automated and they um, combine together, they bring a lot of data to your system, then it's going to impact a little on your instance performance. So in those scenarios, try to break those imports into multiple chunks so that you have you are not blocking the system uh, while bringing in the entire data at a single time. Then we have cascading effects of update. So we have built a feature which kind of updates uh, runs when you update a certain record and it updates three different records. So it's kind of a trigger to update multiple records on multiple tables at the time. Try to reduce that entire cascading effect in a single go. And by that, what I mean is, let's say you have an incident uh, which was created through a problem at the problem has uh, generated a change, okay? So if your incident is closed, your problem is closed and your change is closed. So again, going back, so our functionality is simple this. If your incident is closed, your all the associated problem and all the associated changes are closed automatically. This would be a hypothetical solution as a scenario. So what would happen is, Usually what we do is we want that instantaneously. So either we are going to use before that would be really bad or after business rule. And what happens is we are not just updating single record, it's happening thrice for problem and change too. So instead, if you have switched to async, that would have been better because when you update an incident, you don't want to see or that yes, my problem and change got updated instantaneously. You simply don't care. You just want that at the back end they were closed automatically. So switch to a better solutions uh, that doesn't require your immediate attention or immediate effect within the system. Build a functionality based on that instead of ripple effect, which uh, takes a lot of performance from your system where you could have saved those uh, few ramps or maybe few uh, computations. <laughs> then on after an async business rule. They have their own niche in uh, service now where to use them, but what we do is we usually ignore the async business rules uh, and af on after, uh, over on after business rules. The major difference is Whenever you make an update, on after rules, uh, business rules run after the operation has been performed on the database, okay? And async business rule 
runs on the stack where it would run whenever uh, whenever it so it runs on a stack and it has run whenever it, uh, his number came in the queue. So it's not instantaneously in comparison to after where it had it's going to run after the database operation is complete. So it can happen uh, wherever it can be uh, in terms of queues. Now, the way we can switch from on after to async is simply and it's uh, going to affect a lot of uh, performance. It's going to crunch out a lot of performance numbers for you is whenever you are not working with the current record and you're working with some other record on any other table and you don't want whether it's a fulfiller or end user to see the results immediately then you can simply switch that functionality from on after to async and the simple scenario could be let's say i want that if my request is closed then all the related tasks whether they are um, if they are open or work in progress, I want them all to be closed. Okay. So in this scenario, if you have built an on after, even though your user is not going to see those tasks, you simply uh, closing each and every of those tasks immediately. So it's a cascading effect. It's going to take a lot of computation power. While if you have used async, Although the user experience would have been same, he saw that the re request was closed instantaneously. The task got closed uh, based on when system deemed that now it's time to close them. It's not going to take a lot of time. It would be uh, like seconds, but yes, it's going to help improve your performance of the system. Then code repository. So. It, this part would be really helpful for developers, and I think this is something that should be adopted as a uh, best practices when you are um, working with ServiceNow uh, implementation or maybe regular updates. Make generic or application specific utilities. Like we have date validations or we have other functionalities that we built. And what we do is whenever we try uh, to build that functionality or whenever that functionality uh, needs to be built for a particular implementation we write that code each and every time instead what we can do is uh, i have given four examples two for global utilities and two for uh, any uh, application specific so custom utils and custom utils ajax one is only server side and one is client callable if you want to create a code let's say a date validation simply just add it to custom utils ajax and your developers can reuse it again and again across multiple forms and what would happen is if this particular code is efficient already then all those forms would have an efficient functionality well, if you have rebuilt this uh, particular functionality again and again, chances are that some of those functionalities would be inefficient. So this reduces the gap of introducing inefficiencies within your code. And same goes for custom applications too. And then we have coding in loops. And this part comes from uh, data structures and algorithms where you have multiple complexities and two of them are time and space. So uh, let's say you are writing a code where you have to get, uh, let's say, let's say uh, you have a change and you want a list of all the incidents that are associated with all the problems that are associated with that change so we have three tiers where first you are going to see a certain set of change let's say we have 10 changes for which we want all the problems that are uh, that are associated with that change so let's say each change has a 10 problems so uh, it's a hypothetical solution but think about how it, this is going to scale so 10 changes 
each having a 10 problem set. So that translates to 100. And then each of those 10, uh, each of those 10 problems have 10 incidents associated with it. So that scales to 1000. So when you're writing a code to get a list of all those uh, incidents, change and problem, you would be writing a loop. So GR glide record within a glide record within a glide record. So it's a time complexity. In terms of space, we don't have to take care a lot about that, but time complexities, uh, it's going to have a really great impact on your performance system and performance. So if you want to start somewhere, uh, start looking at the code where you are either uh, creating loops within loops, writing code, uh, glide records within glide records. And if anything is going beyond the second step, like glide record within a glide record or for loop within a for loop, then you have to think about a better solution where you can avoid that loop. So glide record after a glide record is much, much more efficient than glide record within a glide record. And the same goes for any other loop. Then log that bug. So usually uh, if a functionality, uh, let's say we have planned for an implementation, we go already going through all the development cycle. We already gone through all the UAT and everything is working perfectly fine. Great, we have a great implementation. We move the entire code to production. Fine, everything is working fine. All the features and functionality is fine. What we ignore is that whether we are generating logs, which are simply irrelevant now, when we have already moved to production. If yes, then why we have, uh, we are, why we are generating logs? I've seen like 100,000 logs, or maybe like 10, uh, not millions, but yes, close to a million logs being generated in a single day on an instance, and that too on production. It doesn't uh, affect how many logs you are generating or how many transactions you are doing, but all those logs that are being generated are consuming a very little uh, computation power of your instance. And if you are generating like tens of thousands of uh, logs on your production instance, that would be a lot of computation power. You could have saved that and simply, why you are simply generating logs on the production instance? If you want to have a logging mechanism, just in case if you want to generate a logs, simply do this uh, whenever you are writing a script or wherever you are writing a log, add it inside a if loop, which uh, calls for a property in which you can simply set a true false value. So if you want to generate uh, logs, simply set the property to true and your logs would start getting generated. If you don't want that logs, simply set it to false, whether it's a production instance, UAT instance or QA um, dev instance, you have instantaneous turn off and on your logging mechanism. Then reviewing upgrade skips. So we go through update cycle, upgrade cycle and usually what we do is all the updates or all the features that have been skipped because we have already customized them. We don't look them so seriously, we simply skip them. But this is a very important part because ServiceNow is already, uh, already spending a lot to optimize things, to provide the best user experience in terms of whether it's uh, so whenever you are skipping that functionality, you are actually losing something. So if you have customized something, go through what are the new features of functionality or what is the change that ServiceNow has made to that particular feature, compare it with what you have already built or customized. And if you can just merge them, it would be great. If you can, if you have to simply skip it because the level of customization you have done cannot be replicated with the new change, then it's fine. It's the last mile. But 
if those can be merged, it would be best of both world. You had your functionality, which is custom built, plus all the new optimization or maybe new feature that has been brought by service now itself, you got that too. And the last part would be a new expectation of implementation. So when we talk about implementation, we talk about features, what are the things that we are going to build? Uh, what are the functionalities that we are going to have? Uh, and so and so. But what we don't talk about is performance. We have built a lot of features. We have built a lot of functionalities. Great. We have built a lot of automations. But whether they are up to mark, whether they perform, whether they degrade your instance performance, whether they impact the user and fulfill their experience that translates to money, uh, we never ask that question. Whenever you are building a functionality, think about how that functionality is going to behave and that goes for both product owners and developers. That how is going to work with one single record, with 1000 records, with 10,000 records, or maybe 100,000 records. You know how much you are going to use service now. And over the time, like incident, it's a simple implementation in terms of you implement it once, and usually you do it once with small increments over the time. And you have a lot of records. Like if you are using four or five years per service now, you would be having a lot of records. So you have to think about how your functionality is going to scale with the data you have or you might have. Then if a feature or functionality is working, it doesn't mean it's optimized. So let's say you built a really good feature that automates the entire thing or really reduces the burden of from whether it's a user or fulfiller, but whether it's performing correctly or not, whether you could have made it a bit fast or not, that's the question I'm putting in here. So uh, I did some work with a client where they had a catalog form and they had so many on load scripts for that form to automate things like bringing the user uh, information, then bringing uh, location based information and department based information so that the user has the best experience uh, while um, and reduce the effort at the user end so that he doesn't have to fill in all the information. But what it translated to, it took like 10 seconds for the entire form to load to fill in all the information. So yes, automation on uh, functionality, it's working perfectly fine, but it could have been faster if they have planned it more uh, diligently. And then as a developer, this would, I'll throw this out for all the developers out there. When you are building a functionality, even though you have uh, the entire set of functionality and requirement in front of you, think about how the um, end user or fulfiller is going to use it in terms of user experience. Because at the end, even though you have built a feature, end users and the fulfillers are the ones who are going to use those functionalities. So try to make their life easier by building something optimized and efficient. This is the extra mile that we are going to take but it would be a great thing for end users and fulfillers. Then whatever functionality or feature, whether it's an implementation, whether it's a platform wise functionality that you're building, think about even though it's a little bit efficient, it's a, a corner that you cut at the time, maybe it's due to time constraint, maybe it's due to deliverable, but these efficiencies pile up over the time and degrade the overall experience. So this was it from my end. Do we have any questions? Um, you guys can ask, you guys can drop the questions down in the Q&A, Q&A.
Okay. Um, I have a question for you, Sagar. Why would we optimize performance for for, for fulfillers? So, uh, when we build some functionality or features, we usually focus towards the end users because they are wider uh, users in terms of uh, functionality that those who are going to use. But when we count to the fulfillers, every time fulfillers waste a second, that actually translates money. And if you have a lot of fulfillers and you have a lot of inefficiencies within your system, you are wasting a lot of time there. So with the uh, fulfillers focused mindset too, in your implementation, you'll actually saving money at the front. Okay. Um, another one. From where should we start optimizing for performance? So uh, this would be a hard question because there are a lot of uh, places. Uh, but I'll suggest you as uh, first listen to your user, whether those are fulfillers or uh, end users, that where they want to improve your system. Start from there, then look at the logs or the uh, slow queries and that is provided by ServiceNow so that you can have a high level overview of where you can improve a lot. Okay, one more. We are using we are using OLB applica applications. Should we try optimizing it? Uh, yes and no. So it totally depends on how much customizations have you made to that out of box. So out of box solution is already really optimized. And if it's if you think that it's not optimized, it would be great if you talk to service now. Maybe in the next update, uh, they'll bring in those op optimization. But in case if you start optimizing any out of box solution, then you're going to lose the updates in the future. While if you have a lot of customizations on those out of box solutions, then yes, you need to optimize. Because ServiceNow takes care of the out of box things. If you have added the customizations, they may or may not help you in some scenarios, but it would be your responsibilities to optimize and maintain those customizations. Okay, um, we have a question. Using the stats, stats to function in the URL, is there a way to, perf to perform performance tests on our side? Or can you share a method to perform a quick health check? So a uh, quick check would be slow performing queries. That would be the first part. Then there can be certain keywords that you can search uh, within your scripts uh, that can be like glide record or multiple glide records with uh, different tables. Mm, and there can be many other things. So I hope this answered your question. Okay, another question. Is there a benchmark benchmark standard or feature shared by ServiceNow, which can which we can utilize and find the instances performance is bad, okay, or good compared to standard? Hmm. So I know that there is a benchmark functionality, but it's usually for the SLEs that ServiceNow provide, and you have to. Uh, be a part of that uh, benchmark uh, functionality of feature two, uh, so that you can uh, compare your SLEs and uh, delivery time of request and incidents. But I'm not sure about uh, whether ServiceNow has a benchmark for the performance too. They provide you a report, and I think it's a chargeable, but I'm not sure about that. Uh, that tells you that where are the parts that you can improve or there where the best practices have not been used on the instance itself. But for the uh, 
benchmark as a tool i'm not sure about that uh, the starting point would be contact your service now uh, uh, point of contact and just discuss with them if you are seeing any performance impact on your system Okay. Um, any more questions, anyone? Okay. I think that will be all. Thank you everyone for joining us today. Um, and thank you, thank you Sagar for presenting. If you have any more questions, feel free to email us at sales at closing.com. See you next month for our next closed webinar. Thanks, everyone. Have a nice day ahead.